Alrighty, Captains. So what we've got here today is a bit of a countdown that displays a message. So as you can see down here, this would be your countdown. Um, when it gets down to the last seconds only, it will start pulsing. So here we go into the single digits. It'll start flashing at you. And when this gets down to zero, it'll actually display a text message that we have got in our string in. So the really cool thing about the way this works is it's got a bit of an accumulator in here. So this message will stay here until we reset the state. So let's just show you a bit more about what it would look like. So right now, because this is already ticked over to 1054 and we have 1053 in here, let's just reset our state. So what this will do now is because we're saying it's a time before this, it's going to assume that it's the tomorrow's date. So it's going to count down 24 hours ahead of time. So let's just change that up. Let's say we're going to go for 23 or even back in here. Say we want to go to 1055, which is in one minute and 15 seconds. So what we would have noticed here is when we have more than an hour left, the hour will be shown, but we don't have an hour left. It only shows the minutes and seconds and they have got the trailing zero. So it's a bit easier to read like a clock. So here you'll see it goes from one, drops it down. So we remove the minutes and we're just back to the seconds. And so count down to what we did before. So for the inputs you see inside of Regloom, we actually have the string in, which at the moment is just saying happy new year. Uh, the hours, minutes, seconds basically tells us what we're counting down to. Uh, a nice easy way of doing it is I've made it so if you make this to 24, it'll actually zero out the minutes and seconds in the initial part of this graph. So if you're doing something like a New Year's, it's really easy. You just set it to 24. Everything else sort of works itself out. So I'll let this count down while I am explaining the rest of the things here. So what we do have is right on the far side, we have all of our inputs in yellow here. So disregard these headings. I haven't actually um, labeled them up properly yet. So we've got our reset state, which is basically like before. So once we have our condition met, so our countdown timer, um, it will sort of freeze on that position and it won't reset until we click reset state. Um, we have here is the string in. So here you can see happy new year. Uh, text size. So I can actually do a master text size. I found about 1.5 works pretty nicely. Uh, text color is another input. So we can come in if you wanted to make it a yellow or something fancy like that. Uh, eventually I'll probably change the colors uh, based on the times and the message. Here we have the float, uh, sorry, the integer in for the hour, the integer in for the minute and the second. Uh, now this is the part here I was talking about before. So if we have 22, 24 selected, basically it is going to say, look, if it's less than 24, then just pass it straight through to normal. But if it is 24 exactly, we actually want to multiply this by the zero because that's a, a true false bear, like Boolean. So here it's saying, because we're less than 24 at 22, it's sending a true, which is a one. So we're timesing, multiplying, sorry, this minute and second by one. So we're getting 55 and 59. But if we come across and make this 24, that's now false, which is a zero. So now we're getting multipliers of zero out, which is just a really easy way of saying, when you make it 24, you can disregard the minutes and seconds. It's just a really clean way of doing it. So let's just bring that back into something like 23. And I'm just going to reset the state so we've got something to see. So the next one along here is how we're actually going to get our time. So we're actually using the system time. Uh, we're grabbing the hours, minutes, and seconds. And we're doing a little bit of um, multiplication here to get all of our time in, in seconds because it's much easier to work in seconds. So we've got our 24-hour time, minute, and seconds being uh, converted over here. Uh, the way we do this is we take our hours we times them by 3600 and we take our minutes and times them by 60 because if you want to go from seconds to minutes you times by 60 and if you want to go from seconds to hours you times by 60 twice so that's the 3600 so again, we're just adding these two here and we're performing a subtract which basically says all right what is our scheduled time and what is our time that our computer is saying take that away and we'll get how many seconds we have remaining. And you can see that counting down there. We're coming across to here now. I'm plugging this into a time node. And this is really cool because it does the things in the opposite direction. It takes seconds in 
and converts them to seconds, minutes, and hours. Um, one thing I did before I came across to my flaws here was I noticed that when my time had passed, it would still only show the minutes and seconds because it was clashing with the hours. So I actually worked in another part here to say, if this ever goes into a negative number, um, we're going to basically change this uh, into a add 24 mode. So I'll explain this here. So say right now, if I make it to something like here, like nine o'clock, which was an hour ago, if I didn't do this, my clock is saying it is minus one hour and it's going to count up. So this is now looking at uh, this hour's time. If it is less than zero, I am basically going to feed into here to a switch. I'm going to say if it's less than zero, if it's true, we're going to add 24 hours to this hour's time and then put it back in. And that just basically says if the time that we're aiming at, like our target time, is actually earlier than our current time, this alarm or this message is obviously meant to be sent tomorrow at that time. Okay, we are now going to jump across into a bit more of the strings section. So before we do that, uh, we really don't want to have a lot of these decimals in here for the time. So we're adding floors. And all this floor is going to do is basically just round down. So we say this 22.9 here, we're going to make it 22 because it's much easier to work with that way. And this is basically just our strings. Um, this next section here, this little convoluted part here, I'll break it down for you. So again, this float, this sorry, the floor is being turned into a string. And we can just see that's the same thing as the uh, the integer, but it's just in string form. What we need to do here is we're going to say, all right, if this is less than 10, we want to add a zero before that number. So you can see it counting down over here. Uh, when it gets to uh, 10, it'll actually go down to 0, 09. And uh, because I couldn't find a way to do this inside of wire without doing this a little bit, all I'm doing is looking for number 10, putting a gate. Uh, and before this gate, I'm basically adding a 0 in front of it here and feeding it in. So if it's less than 10, it gets a 0 added in front before it transforms across. Alrighty. And what is happening here? is basically we are adding the hours, minutes, and seconds, uh, and just separating them out by a colon space. So space, colon, space, and that is our hours time. The one below it down here, let me just take the, the preview off. The one below it down here is actually going to show us just the um, minutes, seconds, and the one at the bottom is going to be the seconds. Now I've done it this way, so when we have zero hours remaining, we can just switch across to the one that just shows minute seconds. All right, so that is actually being done by up here. So what we're doing at the moment is saying this floor, we are going to say this is our hours. We're going to feed that up. We are going to check if it is less than zero or it is equal to zero. Um, the reason we want to do this is just in case it becomes something like uh, minus one. It shouldn't ever do that, but if it does, uh, we want it to already say that it's already past the zero mark and this is considered there is nothing left. We then punch that into an or, which means either the, the it is less than zero or it is equal to zero. Uh, I'm running this just into an integer here so I can get a zero or a one just because that's the way I programmed it up. If you didn't do that, this gate then would actually be flipped because it puts the true at the top instead of the true at the bottom. Uh, and in this case, the gate basically is taking in a zero for the top value and a, a one for the bottom. Uh, this is going to be hard to explain, but the minutes one here basically runs through into a gate. So we're taking in the minutes and seconds and just the seconds. So if it is only, if it is the minutes is zero, it'll pass through just the seconds. And the main reason we did this was because we're leaving the hours, minutes, seconds, and the minute seconds up here. Um, as I run into an issue when building this, if we put this gate last, uh, every time this gets down into the seconds here, it'll actually cut off all the rest of this. A bit of a horrible explanation, but I'll, I'll hope that suffices. All right, so what we're doing also is 
uh, we are going to come back down here. I'm just going to check if both of these are zero and this seconds only number here is less than 10, uh, which means that we're not going to have any hours. We're not going to have any minutes. We're just going to have seconds. We're actually going to remove that one, that zero, that floating zero. So I'll just explain, I'll uh, show that here. So if we actually kick across to here, 55, let's bring it down. Yeah, to 48, and we can bring it in. So what you see is when it's only in this section, we just only have the single digits because it just, it just looks nicer. It's a bit more impact. So that's what that part there does. This section down here, um, again, we're going to make sure that we are grabbing only when it is just seconds remaining. And this is what handles the, the pulse, which we just saw. So if I bring that back in, so when we get down to the last 10 seconds, we're going to say if that seconds value here counting down is within 10 and one, we're going to check every time it changes, which is every second, we're going to add a, a pulse, like an attack release, and it's going to add that to our transform. The other thing you notice is when we're down to just the seconds, I'll reset that set again, uh, we actually have the scale jumps up. So if I pop that across one more, we see that goes from a scale of one to a scale of two. Uh, and that is actually happening inside here as well. So where was it? Yeah, here. So basically it's just multiplying in to say, all right, when it's just the single part here, we do a switch and we're going to basically make it so the output of this final transform is coming in as two times the size. Um, what we also have along the lines here is this last section with the text render. So there is a gate in here. Now this gate is basically just going to read and see, all right, is there less than zero seconds remaining in the final part? If that's true, we're going to pull our happy new year string in. And if it's false, we're just going to keep grabbing the, the time that runs through this final last part here. Uh, the last part here is we're going in through a transform and a texture out. So I hope some of this makes a little bit of sense. Um, oops, we don't want to move that around. I'm just going to reset this state again once more. Pull it forward one minute. Let it count down in the back. So what we're doing as the last overview is we're grabbing a bunch of inputs. We're converting that into seconds. We're taking the system time and comparing it to the system time in seconds and our time in seconds. If it goes into negative, we're adding 24 to make it yet tomorrow's date. We are then combining the strings. So we're getting our hours, minutes, seconds, our minutes, seconds, or just our seconds. This top section is basically deciding which group is being shown at any time. Down here, we are pulsing the last 10 seconds. Uh, here, we're basically removing that extraneous um, zero. And then we're adding a gate here on the string to bring in our text whenever our timer hits its zero. And then sending out the text out. So I hope it was possible to follow along with that. Uh, I will probably be doing a bit more of a breakdown on this sort of system as I refine it a bit more but it was just my way of trying to tackle a very easy to implement lightweight um, countdown message. So it could be any time of day or specifically midnight for New Year's. And as you can see here, even though that would still be counting down, and if I adjust any of these values right now, it doesn't really too matter too much because that accumulator is actually holding that value for us, which is really, really cool. Alrighty. Um, hope everyone's having a good week so far and hope this was useful all right take it easy